Hello everyone, my name is Kathy Evans. I'm the Environmental Program Manager for the West Michigan Shoreline Regional Development Commission. And I'm very happy to see you all here today to help us celebrate another major milestone in the cleanup of Muskegon Lake and delisting Muskegon Lake as one of the Great Lakes areas of concern. Thank you so much for all of you who are here today. Very, very great work you've been doing for many years. Muskegon Lake shoreline was the place to put industry. If there was a place for a, a foundry, or a place for a machine shop, or a place for a plating company, it was the shores of Muskegon Lake. It, it was unbelievable the, the treatment that the lake got in those days, because Muskegon Lake was used as a dump. They knew which factory was operating on a particular day based on the color of the lake. Was it orange? Was it blue? I mean, just, you know, you can only imagine. And of course, you know, you had a tremendous amount of smoke coming out of these factories, foundries, and paper plants, which we also had on the lake. You know, it was really a heavy industrial era. Uh, we, don't, we don't talk just about the windows not facing the lake, but basically the community didn't want to face the lake. We turned our backs to these lakes. We turned our backs to these lakes. Back in uh, 1990, I was expecting our first child and very excited to move into this beautiful community. A lot of oak trees, beautiful waterways. I thought it was the perfect way to recreate a little bit of my childhood, which involved primarily playing in the woods, climbing trees, playing in the creeks that were nearby, and you know, having a nice, safe community that was clean and friendly and welcoming. And we thought we'd found that here. It was shortly thereafter, in about 1994, when we discovered that parts of Muskegon Lake were highly contaminated, and the little creek that I had been taking my children down to to play in was actually very contaminated. This is the Division Street outfall, and if you look right here, this is the uh, old historic uh, sewer pipe. Had waste from a number of industries that were located along here. Uh, there also was a uh, battery recycling operation that uh, took lead batteries and also mercury switches. This area was very contaminated with uh, heavy metals, and you wouldn't think of going in it. I mean, there, there was oil sheens on the water. 30 years ago, if you would came to this property, uh, you wouldn't recognize it. It was a spider web of roads all across the up, upland area. The shoreline was full of huge slabs of broken concrete, and people would just pull right up to that and throw anything they wanted right over the, right over the hill where nobody would see it. Well, we saw it. I started to talk a bit with my neighbors about what their values were, and did they value their property? Did they value their community? And most importantly, did they value their health? And the one thing they said, it'll never get cleaned up, and that kind of stuck. And that was the attitude in the area, that it's so bad around here that nobody's ever going to clean this up. It's the old 80-20 rule, if you remember the Pareto distribution, where 20% of the people do 80% of the work in any organization. And the 20% of the people that we have in this community that have tackled the environment really make a difference. We had too much pride in our community and our, our waterways, and we just wanted to come down and, and, and make it better. Well, Muskegon Lake is an area of concern, and it's one of an original 43 areas of concern throughout the Great Lakes. What an area of concern really is, it's a water body that's really not meeting water quality standards for a number of different beneficial uses. So Muskegon Lake had nine beneficial use impairments. We had the loss of fish and wildlife habitat, degraded fish and wildlife populations. We had sediments that were contaminated that degraded the benthos. We had eutrophication and undesirable algae on Bear Lake. We had restrictions on drinking water 
and fish and wildlife consumption, and a number of other impairments. There's a lot of uh, concerned citizens, and we all came together and developed the criteria for uh, delisting. It's a large drainage basin, there's wetlands present, there's agriculture upstream, but we wanted to make it the best we could. I would say you have to change what is being valued. You have to use your voice to create the change in the value structure so that people recognize they deserve more. If you took semi-trucks bumper to bumper from New York to San Diego and up to LA of contaminated mud has been removed from the Great Lakes under the Legacy Act. And Rodman Creek was the second one of those projects. My goal was to generate enough awareness to instill the community to take an active role in their backyard. It was the, the convergence of the Great Lakes Legacy Act and the uh, Clean Michigan Act. The DEQ and the EPA uh, matched funds together to uh, make it happen. 80,000 cubic yards of sediment, enough to fill a football field. It just takes a little heart is what it takes. You just gotta go down. If there's a place you love and you don't like the way it looks, don't leave it up to someone else to make the difference. You are somebody else. You are the person that has to go out there and do it. As part of the remediation, when they took all the contaminated sediment out, they did restoration. You can see nice native wetland plants that are growing here. You'd never have that before. This was all concrete and, and rubble. And now we've got the uh, kayak launch. Just a nice overlook facility to look at the wetland. The model under the Area of Concern program of bringing diverse stakeholders together works, you know, and it's an ecosystem view of everything. So we can look at it more holistically and get a more sustainable outcome. This has been going on for 10 years, and, and we're starting to really see not just the short-term, you know, success of our efforts, but the long-term success of our efforts. This legacy of contamination is what the Legacy Act is designed for. I know Muskegon years ago did not have a good reputation. It was considered a dirty industrial town and what it was doing to what nature had given Muskegon was a crime. I'd like today's students, when they're asked, where are you from, to look up and say, well, I'm from Muskegon and I'm proud of what we have in Muskegon. I think what we need to do to make this happen is to get more people out on the water. It's amazing that there are people that live two or three miles away that have never actually been to this lake. So we need to improve access. And that's not just public access to the lake once you're here. We need to get people to this lake and have opportunities to recreate on that lake at, at very low cost. So there's no Im impediments to getting them out on this lake. I think Muskegon stands out definitely within the Great Lakes region, but I, I almost think nationwide in terms of best case scenario of all the different players working so strongly together. I always love coming back to Muskegon. Um, we, we look to Muskegon often as really the place where things are happening, where people know how to get things done. I want you to take a minute and look around at each of you and understand that Progress takes a set of relationships. Here at this site and across Muskegon, across Michigan and across the Great Lakes, we get to hand our children and their children something different and something better than was handed to us.